Hi, I'm Christina. Welcome to The Void. We are here backstage at Max Watts in Melbourne with the guys from the Melbournes. What's happening with like Phantomas and other projects? We haven't recorded that, recorded with Phantomas in more than 10 years. Yeah. We would like to do something with him at some point. I'm not sure what. I got, I got some good ideas, but um, these are really weird ideas. So, What to do with him? Yeah, I got an idea that no one would ever think we would do. Really? You're not going to tell it to me now, are you? No. <laughs> I'm not, Why do you think he's... Cause you, all, he's, not, he's not wrong. I have all kinds of weird ideas about things to do. You yeah. know, Sometimes they sit there for a long time and then they finally happen. What's the wildest thing that on page or in your brain seemed really wild and then came to life and you were like, whoa? We did all 50 states plus D.C. in 51 days in the U.S. How was that? Did it. it was long. 51 days. Did you become better musicians as a part of being that like hardcore? Like that's uh, like an army. We didn't become worse yeah. musicians. How do you? Yeah. Better. How do you see Mike Patton as a? Because you guys have been involved with him, obviously, with this record label for a long time. And well, Mike doesn't have a lot to do with the day to day on the record label. That's Greg Workman, you know. But um, Mike is um, a far more eccentric weirdo than people would imagine. And if his fans knew him. I don't know that they would be fans of his. You know? They must have some idea that he's a weirdo. Are you, are you more eccentric they or is have, They don't have any concept. been making pretty interesting music for a long time. Well, thank you. Yeah. There's been a lot of different colors and flavors yeah, over there. Yeah, operated the way we wished other bands would operate. Yeah, I like the uh, senile animal. That's my favorite one. It's like it's like being punched like a like like it feels like wood. It just feels like like I don't. They're not real words. Um, but like the new thing, like um, walk through walk in love and death. Walk with love yeah. And death. I'm into it. It's like a car chase. It's like a car chase, but like a Doom Generation, like from that movie. And like, there's like good literature in the back, and there's like velvet. That was my visual that I walked away from it. What's the what? How did that sort of come about? And what kind of drew you to making like a filmic thing? Well, I knew we wanted to do something big, and I knew uh, I wanted to do a double album, and um, and I knew I wanted them to be completely different. Where is the film? Uh, we're working on it. Yeah. Actually, me and him are doing it. So wh how's it going? What's what's the vibe? Well, it's going to be very strange, <laughs> um, <Surprise>. but <laughs> not. Um, it's going to be surprising. It's not a tr it's not traditional as far as like you know a, a movie. It'll be about half an hour long. Yeah, cool. Actually, exactly 33 minutes long. It will be. 33 is a good number. Is it a story, like a narrative, or? Well, there'll be a lot of traveling involved, um, and um, it's kind of like a combination of a holy mountain crossed with with uh, found footage. <laughs> awesome. It's gonna be it's gonna be a total mind fuck. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Well, that's, that's the whole point, really, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you gotta, like, that's the whole point, to get under people's skin on some level, right? Well, you know, just walking down the street, for me, gets under people's skin sometimes. <laughs> what makes a band awesome to you? Like, It just has to uh, appeal to me for some reason. It doesn't have to be really good, you know, like, technically. Mm. Uh, it just has to have a, I don't know, an a a animalistic quality to it that feels human. Yeah. Well, th that's like, an, like a, being an artist rather than a technician. Yeah. Imperfections are what 
define artists. There are, are certain highly celebrated artists or, you know, pe people whose work that I see who have become so good at the craft of what they're doing that I'm absolutely disinterested in it. And I'd much, ra you know, I'd, I'd much rather watch children make art because it's it's very it's 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 100 percent expressive. You can't throw technical ability at something and make it creative. Yeah. How do? What did you first get into creatively? Like, did you draw or anything or write or? No, I'm not, not good. At, I'm not good at drawing. I'm good at messy art, yeah. you know. Um, but I'm not good at like making something perfect. Yeah. Well, you, you don't need to. You don't need to do that. Yeah. No, the only thing I've really spent a lot of time on is music. That's it. But I do a lot of art um, outside of that. And I'm always thinking in those terms, you know, Art artistic terms, you yeah. know. Somebody who will remain nameless was talking about how he didn't like that kind of thing. You should just stick with what you're good at and that's it. You know, it's like, well, you know, no, no, you should do that because you're actually not good at anything. <laughs> yeah, well, most creative people like can do different stuff and it's like a good, healthy outlet. He was actually complaining about David Bowie. That David Bowie does too many, too many different things. What? You know what, David Dude. Bowie was a painter and he was in film, he was good at all of it. Who do you think's the most extreme musician of history? History? Yeah. Um, um, Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> yeah, Jerry Lee Lewis, he was, he was pretty extreme. You have to think of it in these terms. If you think of something like Throbbing Gristle in the mid-70s. Yeah. In order to do something as weird as that now, what would you have to do? In order to do something as weird as The Who destroying all their gear in the mid-60s, what would you have to do now? Or even Elvis, you know, being a big Elvis. deal in the 50s. I mean, what would you have to do? So extreme now, I mean, you know, it's Mer Merritt's bow, is that extreme? No. You know, you run a, running a vacuum cleaner through guitar amps and stuff like that is not extreme. Not anymore. <laughs> what, what do you, what song do you enjoy the most live? For, of ours? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. All of them? We we don't do sets the way most bands do. How do you put together a set? It's more like a Broadway musical. What we're doing than than live than uh, than it has more akin to that than what normal bands do. It's a three act structure. Yeah, it's it's uh um, there's a reason why all the songs are where they're at yeah. in the set. It's all worked out beforehand. It has little to do with, well, we need to play two songs off of this album. We need to, that has nothing to do with it. We, we're trying to put together a nice 70 minute set that works all together well. What do you think of the way things are now? It's kind of, what are you going to do? Doesn't bother me. I mean, there's always ways to think of things to do, you know? Yeah. I mean, we're not going to make records that are going to lose money, so you just have to make records that don't lose money. It's a good, you make yeah. make a weird album and make sure it doesn't lose money. How, how do you do it? You just got to figure out a way to do it. Well, I do a thing um, in interviews, which is like talk about like the most played songs on Spotify on a band's album, talk about like secrets behind it. Um, I don't know what they are. Yeah, they're all Houdini songs. What do you, what's, what's a, yeah, well, what's the biggest like misconception about? Because it's obviously some crazy myths and legends going around about that. That whole experience, yeah, and Kurt Cobain and all that kind of. Oh, uh, well, you know, there's not a lot of happy memories for us about uh, surrounding the whole Nirvana thing, you yeah. know. That was kind of a dark time. Yeah, I mean, it's not like, you know, let's just think about the good part. You know, yeah. there's really no good part. Your music isn't all the time, like, and I think that's one of the things that's great about it. There's some bands that were good for like five minutes and you listen to it and you're in, I don't know, like 1986 or whatever and it's fun, but then they sucked for like the whole rest of the time. Well, it's funny, I'll see, I'll see a magazine from like, you know, 87 or something like that or, and go, wow, I forgot all about all those bands, right. you know? And they were like the, the, uh, the best thing and getting the best reviews of everything and, and I, don't, I for, totally forgot about them, you know? I've got a, like a collection of classic 80s old metal magazines and there's one of like Kerry King calling out fucking Metallica and Venom for selling out in like 1980s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, Venom maybe sold. not. No, no. He was lauding Venom no. and saying Metallica. Yeah. Did you ever see Venom back in the day? Never saw Venom. No. But uh, I was, we were always big fans of Venom. They yeah. always cancelled. Every time they were coming to town, they'd cancel. Danny Luca told me some story where everyone walked away covered in gunpowder. I went to a Venom Metallica show. In Staten Island, New York, in like 83 or whatever, but when Venom went on, there was the big, you know, 
intro all dramatic and then like when those bombs went off put it this way there's an, there was an audio tape of that and when that happens it just like wipes out everything you just hear normal like noise and all of a sudden you're just like I, I can't even do it justice what's the main guy's name mattress Cronus. <laughs> Cronus is the uh, is the yoga teacher I believe who's mattress he's the yoga mat teacher I don't know that, Matt, that works out. What's the most ridiculous band you guys have played with? Well, we've been in bad situations on tours that were ridiculous with people like White Zombie. It was not harmonious at all, and that's why it fell apart, because it came a point. It was a hard decision to make, but it just was, it sounds ridiculous to say, but, you know, we finally had all the success and sold millions of records, and we're doing sold-out arenas, and every day was miserable. It was just miserable being in that band. And then we've been in ridiculous situations where um, the people were very cool to us, like with Kiss. You yeah. Know. Yeah, what was that like? Was it weird? That was really was weird, but, but they could not have been nicer to us. So you guys have been together a long, long time. And Over like... Years. Over 30 years. Yeah, like do you remember the first time, the first time you met? Like... Uh, yeah, I, I, I remember, yeah. Was it you in high school? I was in high school. It wasn't at my high school, but I was playing in another band at, that was playing this weird radio show, and the Melbournes were on it. Do you remember this moment? Yes, I remember that. I don't remember meeting him at the radio thing. I remember him playing, but the band he was in was just awful. <laughs> but you saw something in him that was yeah, worth keeping. Yeah, and, and, and um, where we lived there was not a lot of options. Like, underground music wasn't quite a thing at the time, no right? Music. No. It was, but not there. Do you know the band Blood Duster? No. Blood Buster. No, I don't know. What are your favorite Australian bands? Ice World. Birthday Party. Yeah. Fucking yeah. And I like I like the Angels too. Yeah. Listen, we've got some good rock and roll bands. Yeah, Scientists. Yeah. I just saw the Cosmic Psychos yesterday and yeah, they were, this, yeah. They were they Did you see Amal and the Sniffers? I missed them. I wanted to see them. I like their haircuts. Thank you, thank gentlemen, for joining me for a rousing conversation thank you, thank about you. things and stuff. May your next things be good. And <laughs> may your show be excellent. Yeah, may, may your next things be good. And I look forward to seeing the film.